Thank you all very much for your presentations. And we're really excited to learn uh, the creative ways that you use systems thinking in, uh, in elementary and middle school, because uh, it's really important to start students at that level. And we found very creative teachers able to do unbelievable work with young children. So thank you very much. Um, that concludes the webinar portion of this particular uh, presentation and meeting. And uh, so what I would like to do now is to start the SIG, the special interest group, the pre-college special interest group meeting. And the very first part of the pre-college meeting I would invite those of you uh, who are attending to ask any of our presenters, although Uzgen, the second presenter, is not here. She had a conflict today. Um, you can send us questions for her and we can pass them along and uh, we can have her get back to you via email. So if you would, I open it up to questions for our first presenter, Sebnem, on her research with uh, preschool children and Senna on her work with middle school children. Please uh, feel free to uh, raise your hand or if it gets to be a problem, uh, you can just ask unless it gets to be a problem, then you can raise your hand. Are there any questions for our presenters? Well, I have a question. Oh, there you go. Carrie, please ask your question. Hi, uh, thank you very much for some really interesting presentations. I wanted to ask Sebnam a question. Um, you have your pre and post assessments. I wondered whether you'd considered uh, doing another um, post assessment later on um, to test the endurance of the, the skills. And another related question was whether you had then thought about applying that to a, a, different, a different system to test. So different ways of testing transference and endurance of the skills that you were testing for. Thank you. That's a very nice question, and it should be done for sure. Uh, but the conditions very, very, very were very tough for me. Uh, we worked in a, a public school, and it was very. Uh, uh, I mean, it was a very traditional school, let me say. And staying in a, a preschool uh, for one month, uh, and also um, intervening their system, it was not easy. So, I mean, uh, we are lucky that we could finish the job. Uh, so uh, maybe next time, it's a, it's a very good question. Uh, endurance and uh, maybe longitudinal, uh, which would be something that would be very beneficial for me to learn and also to reflect on the uh, scientific article. Thank you. Other questions? I actually have a question for Sebnim. You said uh, that you have a book, uh, a, a guidebook for doing this. Can you tell us how we can get access to this guidebook? Yes, I shared it with one of the participants in a private mode. Uh, the problem is it's in Turkish. Uh, it would be a pleasure to share it right now uh, through chat, but the content is in Turkish. Uh, but still, I think, you know, it has a lot of visuals, lots of visuals. Uh, I think it can be explored through visuals. Or would it be I very can... difficult to translate to English? Is it possible to run the document through a translator? Uh, I, I don't think it's a big job, uh, but it requires time and energy. It is sure. Two, yeah, it's a 200 page long document. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, but, but we should do it. I mean, uh, I, I have the intention to start with it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
it's going to be very important to see if we can find a school that can start in preschool with some systems thinking concepts and run those lessons all the way through middle school. Um, do you know of any places in Turkey, uh, Sebnim or Sena, where they are actually following systems, think using systems thinking all the way through for the students from one year to the next they can build on their expertise? Do you know of anything like that? Andrea, would you like to answer this question? Uh. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> we, uh, we caught you off guard, Emre. We were looking for any schools mm -hmm. that were using systems thinking concepts all the way through the grades so that we could see the buildup of systems thinking concepts yep. over grades with the children. Right now, we have one, one area that's done some work in preschool, another that has done some work at primary, another with middle school. Do we have any place where it's uh, continuous throughout the elementary grades? Uh, as far as I know, I, I think we only have a, a complete four-year period to the middle school. We have primary years, four years, uh, blocks, but we do not have that uh, continuation uh, to the uh, middle school. We have a middle school, Darushafaka middle school, uh, but they do not have the primary part, so they are separated. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have. Uh, Senna, I thought your your work with sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade was. Uh, extremely valuable because you were setting up ideas in the sixth grade that you could then use in the seventh and eighth grade. I also thought it was amazing for you to use students who had been previously exposed to systems thinking as facilitators for uh, the new students. I think that's a terrific method, Do you, have you used that before or did you just come up with it for this particular uh, lesson? We were using it in some uh, group works, but uh, as a whole, we used it like specifically in um, this work. And Malta Mojo maybe would like to explain it better, but uh, like our intention, like the starting intention was like that at the same time, like, uh, having the students from the lower grades and uh, like taking them till the end and building on it uh, year by year. And actually this year we are doing it uh, with former seventh grade students. Uh, this year we are working on uh, um, climate dynamics and the um, environmental um, education. So basically we have some same students from last year and also uh, additions. Like maybe like the intention could be explained better by Marta Moja. <laughs> no, no. The, yeah, maybe for adding, uh, it's it. We would like to see it is a part of the school culture that everybody learns from each other, and also the uh, peer learning is very important because the mental models are similar in according to the research, uh, and also uh, good for us uh, to think with them as well. That's why um, this year, this is the third year in our school that we are moving more uh, in this practice. Um, I, I would like to introduce Mel Tem. She is an administrator at the school, but she also is in charge of research and development. And I think when you have both a, an administrator who is very supportive and really likes this idea and teachers who are interested in doing it, you have a perfect storm of uh, potential for infusing systems thinking. So thank you, Meltem. Are there thank other you, questions? Are there any other questions? Yes, Razish. Uh, hi, yes. everyone. Thank you. Actually, I have a question from Sena. Um, I think she explained in her uh, presentation that she worked with uh, her students, I don't know, um, about the behavior over time graphic, uh, graphics. And, and 
I want to ask if that was the, the mathematics wasn't hard for your students at that age. Uh, is the mathematical background, um, I don't know, somehow uh, presented in their mathematics or you just explained all the whole the whole thing to them? Because I think I'm actually doing the same thing, but in high school. Uh, but I actually, even with high school students, have some uh, difficulties with explaining the mathematics and drawing the graphics and transforming them to each other. I want to know about your difficulties in this matter. Yeah, thank you so much for your question. Um, actually, that's why we are working closely with the mathematics department, because whenever we have a difficulty in explaining a, a concept, so they were helping us and uh, they also know the prior knowledge of those students and they knew them better than us, then uh, we were able to create the materials based on their prior knowledge. But when we had a difficulty to explain um we usually did it like during the classroom but the difference from the high school in the middle school is that actually we don't ask students to uh, convert position time to the velocity time we just want them want them to uh, explain what is happening in the position time graph and how it is related to the velocity time graph and they are not doing like we didn't give them a position graph and they wrote a velocity graph we didn't do something like that but we gave together and we just wanted them to connect uh, one to another maybe that's the reason that we didn't have that much of a problem because they were able to see the increase or the change in increase and they could explain it together with the velocity graph but since there was no conversion like, uh, like we didn't give a blank graph for example we all the time they were presented together. Maybe that's why we had less difficulties during the time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there other questions? I see in the chat that it says a question to Senna, where can we review your work? The System Dynamics Society has a learning and teaching thread for their international conference. And we always invite educators to present papers or uh, slide presentation uh, with explanation as a possibility of presenting to the international conference. Senna has had some work that has been accepted for presentation last year, and um, we're hoping to see more of her work uh, in the future. But are there other places people can see your work, Senna? It is actually on the like the Systems Thinking Association and in Turkey's website. Every document is in there, but they are all in Turkish. And that is another problem. And, and that is where there are where there's good work being done. They're doing the work in the language of their country, obviously, because that's what their children need to need to hear. And we need some of this good work translated um, to, well, of course, I'm partial to English, but uh, to other languages so it can be available. Um, I think we need to think more about which resources can be translated. But as you can uh, hear, Senna's English is really quite good. And you could probably communicate with her via email yeah. and I'm sure she would uh, be happy to uh, talk to you. And Emre in the chat has indicated the, is that correct Emre? The URL is the Turkish System Dynamics. Is that the website for the Turkish System Dynamics uh, website? No, it's uh, the activity guide uh, of Shebnam's uh, oh. presentation, that one. But okay. I'll put that. Okay, minute. so the, the Turkish Systems Thinking uh community of educators and researchers they have a, a fairly significant website and uh 
some of some of the presentations are in Turkish, but you can go to the website and have the browser translate to English. So you can get some information. So Sebna, I'm um, sorry, not Sebna, but uh, Emre is, has now put on the chat how to uh, reach that particular website. I would say to those of you here, there's terrific work going on in Turkey. They have, they have approached the infusion of systems thinking into pre-college systemically. So in our February meeting, we're going to look at um, MRA's system dynamics model of how they have approached this uh, infusion. They go all the way back to teacher preparation at the university level. And, and I think it's very important. So I, I think we need to pay attention to what's going on in Turkey. Um, and just to, to, to let you know that they are probably the furthest along in the infusion of systems thinking and sis with focus on system dynamics <laughs> um, in, in their work. Before we move to the next part of our SIG meeting, I would like to give you one more opportunity to uh, ask any questions of Sebnem or Sena. Is there, are there any more questions? Well, I think they uh, have done wonderful work. Thank you so much. And please, if you think of questions later, you can contact us via the email, the, the pre-college education at systems, systemdynamics.org. That's our official um, email. Uh, but uh, if you have the email of any of the others of us, please feel free to contact us.